Welcome to More Than Just Business. I'm your host, Rick Franzo. This show is powered by the Growth Coach of the Poconos. With us today is Jason Costanzo, a lawyer from ARM Lawyers and a good friend of mine. Jason, how you doing? I'm good, Rick. How are you? Doing good. It looks like uh, <laughs> the quarantine has been very kind to you. We've got facial hair. We've got right. uh, more hair on your head than I think that I've ever seen. So yeah, 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 yeah. Quarantine's, quarantine's been okay. If all I've got is a haircut to complain about, then uh, then I'm doing okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for your time today. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Excellent. So uh, Jason does criminal law, civil law, trusts, estate planning, wills, D, all of the above. Uh, there's so much more to what Jason does as a lawyer. <laughs> but first off, Jason, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're newly married, right? Yes, I am. I'm uh I'm a younger attorney. I, I belong to the, the Young Lawyer Division of the Monroe County Bar Association. I, I work with um, armed lawyers. I'm in a, one of the bigger law firms in town. Uh, I've been in practice about five years. I graduated from Syracuse Law School. I lived in New York State my whole life. And I somehow found my way down to the Poconos. Uh, my wife and I, we bought a house in Monroe County. We live in Everett. Uh, we've been together since the ninth grade. So <laughs> we're here for the long haul. Um, I started working on the law firm. Our law firm is a general practice law firm. It, uh, it, it handles your, your standard types of non-specialized requests, divorce, custody, criminal law, traffic tickets, wills, deeds, you know, those types of general things. You know, we, we don't do a lot of these specific uh, types of law like immigration, for example, uh, or sports media or, or maritime law, those types of things. Um, I got involved doing a lot of general practice work until I found my niche, and my niche within my firm is doing mostly estate planning, mostly estate planning, drafting wills, trusts, powers of attorney, planning for death, planning for wealth transfers, planning for your own incapacity, and those sorts of things. Nice. Excellent. What made you want to be a lawyer? What was the career <laughs> path? What does that look like? Yeah, actually, I'm the I'm the what we what I refer to as the anti-lawyer. I uh, a lot of people had a, a lawyer in their family, you know, dad's a, a lawyer or uncle's a judge or so, something like that. I, no one in my family practices law, and in fact, it was an unpopular decision amongst my family. Both my parents having been divorced, uh, <laughs> and therefore, you know, committing to the idea that lawyers are no good. Um, <laughs> I became a lawyer because I didn't know what else to do. I had I wanted to go to uh, I wanted a graduate level education. And I wasn't committed to any of the other types of graduate levels coursework. And uh, Patrick Best, a mentor to me and a good friend before either of us became lawyers, he said, listen, law school is where you got to go. That's a transferable degree. Uh, he said, I have a, a knack for communication and a knack for, for argument and things of the sort. Uh, and, and that I would do well for myself. And I'm, I'm very happy that I did it. Uh, I'm not happy with the price tag. Uh, <laughs> but I'm happy I did it. It's, it's, a, it's a fulfilling career thus far where I'm able to just connect and reach out and touch a lot of people. I'm, I'm able to get into people's real problems and actually help them. Um, you know, and I'm not talking about, Hey, you know, I want to sue Bob Jones for, for $10,000. I'm helping people who are trying to take care of mom and dad and they can't deal with the hospital. I'm helping with people uh, who want to leave assets to their children. They have real family issues, um, bad apples in the family, things of that sort. Uh, roadblocks, you know, and when people come to me for help and I help them, the practice area that I found is one where I generally experience that people say thank you. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it's fulfilling to know that why I got into be a lawyer was a bit kind of lost and misguided and wandering, uh, but I'm happy to, that I found myself where I am. I'm going to take that lawsuit uh, to Bob Jones. I'm going to take that right off the table. <laughs> that was on my agenda and now, um, you know, I guess I'm, I'm not. <laughs> So in the realm of trusts and estate planning, you touched on that uh, a little bit. What's important? Why is that important for people right now, especially with COVID? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, nobody likes to think about death. You know, I'm, I sit here today in 2020, I'm 31 years old and, and nobody thinks that death is coming for them. Uh, nobody, everybody kind of it's uncomfortable to think about. It's just human nature just to not put a lot of focus or emphasis on that. Um, and, and sometimes it takes a global pandemic <laughs> for people to kind of wake up and smell the, their own mortality, so to speak. Um, estate planning is, is important, not just because of you and not because we're just giving assets away to, to family and friends. It's important because if you don't do any planning, 
you're creating a big problem, potentially a big problem for your children, your family. Um, you know, most oftentimes before people pass away, they become incapacitated. And if you don't have a document, generally referred to as a power of attorney or a healthcare directive, there's a lot of different ways where without you passing away, you can become a big burden to your family in terms of your care, in terms of arguments, in terms of um, disputes over how you should be cared for, who should be caring for you, how much, uh, you know, how much of your assets should be allocated towards your care, and things of that sort. You know? And so it's critically important, especially right now, for people to think about the tough questions. What would happen to my children if I didn't come home today? And I don't mean in the abstract, in this big picture, and in six months, where would they be? I mean, literally today, if you didn't come home and you have minor children, what would happen to them? Where would they go? Um, you know, if you own a business, oftentimes people don't view businesses as assets. Owning a business, it, it's an asset. So if you were to pass away, what happens is, is your asset gets distributed by a will. And if you don't have a will, you don't have an estate plan, well, Pennsylvania has an estate plan for you. In fact, most states have an intestacy law. All states, to my knowledge, have intestacy laws, which if you don't have a plan, they come up with one for you. You know, I know a lot of people who are in businesses and business owners particularly who they like their business partners, but they're not super fond of their the spouses of their business partners. And you got to ask yourself, hey, you know, how comfortable would I be becoming partners with my my current partner's spouse? Uh, you know, what happens if somebody died? What happens if somebody became divorced? So that type of planning for business owners and parents, I mean, it's critically important. With the virus going on, I mean, it, this this health pandemic has affected everybody in, in in very personal and very different ways. You know, in our family, my wife lost grandfather to the virus, um, and we went to the service, and the service is unlike anything I've ever experienced. You know, it was ten people, all ten feet apart. Everybody had their phones up, FaceTiming with other loved ones and family members. Uh, it's, it's very close to me. I have two, two of my grandparents are in nursing homes right now. And one of them, the third one is nursing home bound. Um, so, you know, what's happening in, in my practice and why it's, why is it important right now is because, you know, generally speaking, when somebody contracts this virus, their timetable to take action is rather quick. You know, my general turnaround time on trust is, is not usually under two weeks. Uh, so for right now, it's critically important because if there is a situation where, you know, you, you have a diagnosis of the virus. We have to act quickly. We don't know what's going to happen. And we want to make sure that we protect you, protect your family. We preserve your business and we, you know, we, we secure your legacy. You know, <laughs> what message do you want to send to your family? You know, um, and so that, that's where we're coming from. The virus right now, it, the, the estate planning component of it, I mean, ideally what it's done and what it should do is it should open people's eyes to the need to take care of this stuff before there's a problem. Um, you know, and, and most folks can say that they have experienced someone who either a friend or relative or themselves ha has interacted with this virus. And if everybody knows somebody who's interacted with the virus, that should be a wake up call. You know, hey, I need to take care of this stuff. And frankly, you know, the estate planning attorney is going to tell you everybody needs a will. Everybody needs a power of attorney. Right. Um, but if you don't draft one in, in, the, in the middle of a global pandemic, I'm concerned that you ever may draft one. <laughs> so okay. now's the time. That's really, oh, no, that's that's a great point. But let's just say that, I, let's say I want to go and I want to draft a, a, a will or a trust or I want sure. estate planning. But I'm not sure if uh, you can do that. Um, we're not meeting in the office. Um, mm -hmm. What if I need to get something notarized? Okay, the notaries, mm -hmm. they're not uh, open. We're still in the red here in Monroe County, at mm -hmm. least here and now. Um, how do I sign things? Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, does everything come to a halt or do we have to wait <laughs> or uh, what happens? No, it's a, it's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Um, <clears throat> The governor and the Pennsylvania Department of State came out with a couple different emergency memorandums, which called for the need to be able to electronically notarize and electronically sign and electronically witness documents. And it's funny that in the first memo was in March, uh, March 25th, and it addressed real estate transactions. Hey, if, if offices are closed and we can't do closings and signings, that's really going to hinder people's abilities to move, maybe move into their new place. I think the concern initially was people would be kind of stuck in this limbo homeless stage and they didn't want that. Um, very quickly thereafter in April, there was a second memorandum which addressed uh, estate planning documents and the need was uh, logical. It was very intuitive to follow. People are having very serious health crises. People are passing away. Um, it's a very serious virus. People need to be able to do legacy planning even when offices are closed. 
Uh, and so they did, they authorized electronic notarization. So you have to get approval, you have to become registered um, from the Department of State. And there's a fair amount of red tape you gotta, and hoops you gotta jump through, but our office has done it. And we've done it because it's a core component of my practice. I don't want people to call me and say, hey, here's an emergency, I need your help. And I don't, I don't want the last thing to come out of my mouth to be, I'm sorry, I can't do that for you. In right. fact, I don't think I've ever been able, I've ever had to say that to somebody. I've certainly made recommendations to people to find certain specialties when, when the, the need calls for it. But um, yeah, electronic notarizations are, they're a thing of the future. I mean, there's a lot of states who had authorized them before this, this, this pandemic going on here. Uh, Pennsylvania, I, I guess they're a bit lagging behind, but I think that now that they've been authorized and they've been sort of underway, everybody's finding that it's very easy. In fact, an electronic notarization requires additional security measures that an in-person notarization does not. Um, it's convenient, you know? I don't have to call in people into my office and, and parade in witnesses and notaries and we all get around and sign, and particularly elderly folks. I mean, you know, taking somebody who's elderly to a, just a lawyer's office to sign something, that can oftentimes be a monumental event. People have to take off work to orchestrate transportation, and it has, we have to be having a good day, mentally, physically, so on and so forth. Uh, and it disrupts the routine. You know, people in, in, in that age bracket generally have routines. It, it's tough. Doing it electronically, it's very simple. Here, put, come on in. We'll put you in right here on the screen. The notary will jump in the call. We'll watch it. You know, we'll witness you sign the document. Uh, you'll provide your driver's license and things, but a lot of people have the impression that you did, which is, you know, the wheels of the economy and thus all businesses have grinded to a screeching halt. And that's simply not the case. I've been doing more estate planning in the last two months than ever, uh, if we're being, you know, if we're being very, very blatant about it. Um, and the electronic notarizations enable that to, to, to happen. So, you know, anybody out there who's under the impression that you can't do this stuff or I can't go meet with my lawyer or I, I can't understand how these things work, I have a very super sophisticated high-tech dry erase board and blue marker. And I use the zoom here, <laughs> I draw all over it until people are, I'm confident that people understand. Uh, and people leave the call generally knowing what's in, in these documents and generally happy. Uh, and as long as we can get them signed and notarized, and we know that if they need them, they're out there and they'll work, you know, mission accomplished. That's, uh, you know, the, you had me until the blue marker and the fly and, <laughs> race board. That's way over my, my competition <laughs> level. That's way over my pay grade. And so you just lost me right there. I'm, you know, it was, it was nice talking to you, but uh, you know, you had to get all like tech savvy on me and I just, I can't have that. So we had, you would touch a little bit on breaking routine and you had talked about with elderly people coming in and that disrupts their routine. Well, all of us have had our routines disrupted and um, especially people that uh, cohabitate with each other, but don't have to cohabitate under quarantine with each other. And so routines have been disrupted uh, and lives have been disrupted. And one of the things that is probably going to come out of this is that there's going to be probably an uptick of divorces that uh, happens with this. So you're fully prepared to, uh, to handle that. Has anything come your way in numbers without you getting anywhere specific? Sure, Are sure. In, uh, yeah. more people inquiring about this? Yeah, I, uh, it, it's, it is practical, it, it is intuitive, it's unfortunate. But yes, I mean, if I, effectively, when we get a website lead, um, our, our website is designed to capture people who are looking for help and to provide them help. And so when people put in a website lead for us or, or they call the office and our, our staff fields the phone call and they send out the, the new prospective client to the attorneys to figure out who the appropriate attorney would be to help them and whose skill set is best suited for that, what we found is, is a, an incredibly high volume, an in, increased volume in divorce cases and sadly also in protection from abuse or domestic violence related yeah. cases. Uh, and, and I don't think that that's a product of necessarily bad behavior or an increase in bad behavior. I, I honestly think it's just a higher incident rate. You know, you put uh, 10 people on the street, someone may slip and fall. You put 10,000 people in an amusement park and there's going to be more people that slip and fall. Um, and so I just, it, it, the, the environment is kind of enabling those types of issues. And, and certainly I would imagine there's a number of people who are having relationship growth out of this too. Um, but yes, the frequency for divorce and for domestic violence has gone up. Um, it's, it's one of the most noted changes for us. Um, there's also a lot of financial issues. 
So a lot of people with financial issues, they, 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 those things lead to disputes, disputes within the family, among, among spouses. It's also, we anticipate it's going to lead to a spike in, in bankruptcy filings, you know, coming up here shortly as well. You know, foreclosure, sheriff sales, mortgage modifications, kind of the natural financial things that follow, right. um, you know, a downtick in the economy. So, yeah, there have been some, some pragmatic changes, uh, some increases in some areas, some decreases in some other areas. There has been a, a shortage of personal injury type matters, um, probably attributable to there's not as many people out and about in, in the world, you know, that everybody's kind of staying home. Uh, you know, and if you slip and fall in your backyard, it's a lot different than if you slipped and, and fell in a public place. Even DUIs um, are probably down too because not as many people on the roads. You're absolutely right. There's just less less drinking places open and available to the public. You know, you're, people aren't going out to the bars right now. Um, you know, and so if, if people are consuming alcohol, they're they're mostly doing it from home, or at least that would be my, you know, that's that's what I would understand from it. Um, yeah, the DUI rates are down. Um, the courts are closed. <laughs> so what's really interesting is, is, you know, we're, I'm gauging this off of inquiries by clients, but certainly not by looking at any sort of court calendar to determine or ascertain what's up, what's down, how many cases are we filing, you know, how, how what direction are we taking in this? Because we really don't know. Uh, we really don't know what's going to happen here. I will tell you in my personal practice, and this could be incidental, it could be related to the virus, I don't know. A lot of children I'm finding are becoming more involved in their parents' care. And this month alone, on a typical month, I file probably one, maybe two different guardianship proceedings. And a guardianship is a, an ability for, a, it's generally a child, to take over the affairs of their parent when their parent lacks the wherewithal and the capacity to sign a power of attorney. Um, so I draft a power of attorney. My wife can take over my affairs if I become incapacitated. Well, my grandmother's 95 years old. She does not, she has Alzheimer's. She doesn't have the understanding to draft or sign a power of attorney. And honestly, if she did sign one, it would be unenforceable because she, she can't contemplate, she can't understand what she's doing. Right. So somebody in order to take care of her would have to draft a guardianship. Uh, and it's basically saying, look, grandma can't decide somebody should take care of her, but the children really want to take care of her and act in her best interest. I spoke with somebody today. Uh, they're having trouble. They want to get rid of this doctor and hire a new doctor. And the child doesn't have the authority to do that. And mom doesn't have the level of cognition to make that decision. And if she did make that decision, you know, they're not going to take her seriously because of her mental state. Right. And so I said, look, the answer here is, is you need to file a guardianship. Go ask the court for assistance. Say, help. I need mom to draft this document. She can't do it. Will you sign a court order that recognizes that I am uh, looking after the best interests of my mother and acting completely in good faith? So I have seen a higher involvement rate of children in their parents' care. I filed six, going to be seven probably by the time we're out this month, six or seven guardianships this month, Wow! Uh, which, which is phenomenal. Um, <laughs> you know, I, it's kind of one of those natural responses to being around more and being accessible more is people are paying a lot more attention. Uh, and, and for my existing clients, I'm trying to encourage that they maintain that level of involvement to help them. You know, it's obviously people's life circumstances are a bit different, but you know, in my personal practice, I've seen an increase in a totally positive way, an increase of involvement and in, in care for the elderly. I think that's phenomenal. Yeah. And so if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, uh, maybe on that point or uh, with wills, estate planning, trusts, criminal, civil, uh, any of the uh, various uh, portions of the law that you uh, practice in, how would they get in touch with you, Jason? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple different ways. I mean, I've been giving out my, my personal phone number while I've been working from home as a, as a practical matter to my clients, <laughs> not to new inquiries, but to my clients. Um, I have an email address. It's just Jason, my first name, at armlawyers.com. Mm -hmm. uh, you can call our office, put in an inquiry on our website that gets sent directly to my email. My email comes directly to my phone. Um, generally, I, I work long hours. <laughs> I'm a younger attorney, and that comes with the territory. Uh, but, you know, working from home, the, the lines of when I'm at the office and when I'm not have been kind of blurred. You know, <laughs> I've been working on weekends. I've been working, you know, I'll call, I've called somebody at uh, 5.15 in the morning because they're on West Coast and they're, respond, they're essential staff, you know, out that way, and they need to get to work and things. And I said, look, I'll make that accommodation if it'll help you and your family. 
uh, and I've called somebody at nine o'clock at night. <laughs> so, you know, I've got four appointments lined up on Memorial Day. So. <laughs> yeah, sounds, like, sounds like you need a little bit of guidance, maybe on time and priority management. <laughs> Perhaps a uh, business coach might be able to help. Rick, do you, do you know a good business coach you could refer me to? <laughs> the number of one, I can't really do that here. Conflict of interest for me, right? So if somebody wanted to call your offices, what would the number be, Jason? Sure, 570-424-6899. And that, that call will get forwarded to our staff working from home. You know, hopefully with the county going to yellow, we'll be able to, you know, reopen our physical office location here shortly. Uh, but yeah, 570-424-6899 or shoot me an email, jason at armlawyers.com. And what's the website for Arm Lawyers? Yeah, it's just armlawyers.com. That was simple enough. Very good. Got it. Jason Costanzo, lawyer, a superhero, <laughs> Arm Lawyers, Aaron Lawyers in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Jason, thank you so much for your time today. Rick, really thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You got it. Stay well. And thank you all for joining us for more than just business. We'll catch you the next time. I'm your host, Rick Franzo. Stay gold. Mm -hmm.